Hey guys, Bar from TST Industries here. Check this out. KTM 690 SMCR, 690 cc's in one cylinder, thump thump, all this crazy torque. It looks great, it rides great, great suspension, super fun to ride. It's been out for a couple seasons. You guys probably know how awesome it is. One little foul from the factory, at least in my opinion. They really shortchanged the bike with the whole tail end. It's a very interesting looking tail light, but the bike really demands something sleeker in the back, maybe less stuff hanging off of it. So here at TST Industries, this is what we do. We've designed an awesome integrated tail light and fender eliminator package that will go on that bike without cutting anything, without splicing any wires. It's all plug and play, bolt up, ready to go. This is what it looks like when it's put together. The tail light exists in clear or smoke lens. It is integrated, so you have the option of running the signals inside your capsule. If you don't want to do that, if you want external signals, you place these screws with the signals and our sub harness that is plug and play with the factory harness under the seat has the plug for the tail light and also pigtails that will connect external signals. So there's no additional splicing or anything like that. The materials that the brackets are made out of are high quality laser cut stainless steels on the inner tail light bracket. We just left it bare. This gives a nice contrast to the outer that we powder coated black. When you put them together, you have this look from the side and uh, you're still running stainless steel. So in harsh environments, this thing won't rust on you. It'll last the lifetime of the vehicle, but the outer bracket will match the black panels of the bike and the undertail and the tail a little bit better than just the stainless steel. So I think this is a really nice concept here. The silver shining through these cutouts uh, web design. Uh, it actually matches some of the silver components like the swing arm, uh, exhaust, a couple other things. So it's a really nice contrast. All of our kits, as far as fender elimination goes, do not include a license plate light by default because some guys just choose not to run it. So why make you pay for it? We make our kits affordable and give you the option of adding this for a couple bucks. And uh, this really couples nicely with, uh, with this whole kit. I'll show you how to install it. We do have a separate video showing how to install this on sport bikes, but since this is an SMCR, we're gonna do it for you here on video. Anytime you go away from using the incandescent signals that the OEM put on the bike and replace them by LED signals, you will tend to have a hyper flash situation where the signaling system will flash a little bit faster. On some bikes, it's much faster. On some bikes, it's not. This particular bike is pretty good. If you do not choose to buy a flasher relay, cool. You won't harm any of the electricals, but you'll flash a little bit faster. If you do want the ability to slow down your flash rate and furthermore, even adjust the flash rate to your liking, our Gen 2 flasher relay does that. We do have a separate video showing you how to do that. So please look for that on our channel or at tstindustries.com. One additional note on the signals. We do have several different types of external signals that are compatible with our kit. If you do not like any of the signals that we're selling but want external signals, all you have to look for is eight millimeter or less stud diameter, and you'll be able to put any aftermarket signal on this kit. All right, I think I've yapped enough here. I'm really excited. Let's get on the bike and let's start wrenching. Let's make step one, the removal of our license plate. We're gonna retain the hardware that is currently holding the license plate. I'm gonna reuse that on our aftermarket setup. Now underneath the bike, we're going to have to remove these four screws. They are removed using a T30 Torx bit. If you do not have one of these, you can make do with a four millimeter Allen. It's not a very good method for removing these, but it'll get you by. There is one additional screw that you can't see right now because it's in this well. It goes through here, through your subframe uh, tank section and into the top fairing, top tail fairing. 
and that needs to be removed using an eight millimeter socket. And it looks like this, and that comes out. And now we can jump up top. At this point, from up top, I'm gonna to pop the seat off. Unlock the fuel cap. And now this whole top tail section just pops out towards the rear. I'm gonna replace this for the time being. I don't want any debris getting in there into our tank. Now we'll need to locate the main sub harness, the tail lighting sub harness plug underneath all of these electronics. It is screwed in using a T30 once again. So I'm gonna remove the three screws that hold this tray on and give us the access we need underneath there to the main connector. If you have slender fingers, this is gonna be easy for you. I have some fat fingers here, so I'm gonna use you know, those pliers to get my screws out so that I don't drop them deep in there and I have to dig around for them. Let's retain these. These will go back in the same locations. When we pull up on this guy here, we will discover this six position plug and we'll be able to just press on the lock and withdraw it from the mating plug. And when you find a flatter section of cable here, you could pull up and around this retainer. And here we have another Torx screw that holds this retainer down. Unfortunately, it's not a T30, so we have to switch over to a T20, I believe, T25. Here we go. That's the right one. We will also retain this setup. It'll be very useful in getting our new, new tail light system in. Now that all of our wiring is free, two screws remain here. They are the T30. Once we get those out, we'll be able to take the whole fender off along with the lighting. And once we're down to the one last screw, this gets pretty tipsy. I'm gonna support it underneath so it doesn't just drop. And carefully take it out, making sure I don't snag anything else. And now this is out, good to go. One thing I want to illustrate before we cut is the screw that I took off from underneath. It locates and centers in here and goes into the tail into this component. Just wanted to show you that because we weren't able to illustrate it very well from the bottom. All right, let's move on. I've prepped my components here on the table. We're going to start with this bracket and our tail light, and we'll need some hardware to get things mounted together. Our hardware kit has a number of components in it. I'm gonna empty the kit, and I'm gonna identify it for you. Let's start with the simple things. Our foam strip just goes up here. I'll mount that a little bit later. These are zip ties for cable management. We have several M6 by 12 screws. They're pretty much all the same, so it's pretty easy to select. We have two nylock M6 nuts that go with two of these, so I'm gonna separate them. We have these rubber O-rings that get inserted over two of these screws to locate them and center them in this bracket. And then finally, we have three thread cutting trilobular plastite screws that will form the thread in these connections. It'll hold our light to the bracket. And because they are self-threading and they are made for thermoplastics, they resist vibration and uh, vibratory removal. But we need to use a little bit of caution when using these. So please make sure you don't over tighten them. As we start 
the thread in the hole, you'll see that the axis of the, the screw aligns itself with the axis of the boss that accepts it. And here I'm really just going all the way up until I'm almost against the bracket material. What I want to do is make sure that I still have a little bit of adjustability up and down. We are fastening through slots into holes. We want to retain just a little bit of adjustability, not too much slop, just enough to go up and down. All right, let's see. It's still adjustable up and down. I'm going to grab the top tail fairing here and show you guys how these parts are meant to interface with the fairing. So you can see here, we have a catch tab. It has a geometry that is similar to the top curvature of our tail light. So we designed this entire system to have an upper portion that slides that tab underneath and then that tab engages on top of the top of the tail light. So the name of the game here is to not have it too tight. If you adjust the tail light in the slots up too high, you won't have enough room here for this tab to actually get in. If you have it too low, it'll end up being pretty sloppy. So what I'll do is just go to the loosest configuration, which is tail light down, bracket up. Get that tightened down just a little bit, just on the two screws. And then I'm gonna move the bracket down on this tail light by just a smidge, making sure that it's still top surfaces are parallel with these surfaces. And then I'm gonna lock that down. Now the easiest way to lock it down without shifting it is to do the middle screw first. And then the side screws. And now I'm gonna test it, make sure that I have that engagement that I like. So you can see here, this geometry of this tab actually catches the tab down in between these two components and also prevents it from sliding side to side. If you manage to get this perfect on the first shot, kudos. I actually did this a bunch of times in the R&D stage, so I know more or less what it needs. I'm able to get it in there pretty tight. This is really nice. What I'm gonna do is, while holding it in this configuration here with the other part, I'm gonna tighten it down all the way. Now what that means is you just wanna apply some force onto the screws so that they preload themselves against the plastic that they're cutting threads in. Do not try to apply more force than that. Now we're able to strip this off the fairing and now we have this component ready to go. So, now we have two holes on each side. This is slotted slightly so that you can have a little bit of adjustment because each of these bikes with their panels and things that happen to these bikes in consequence of people monkeying around, they end up shifting. So we gave you a little bit of forward and aft movement. The rearmost holes, they're really just meant for either the use of signals through here. This is where you would mount your signals or we provide you with these rubber grommets and screws that will go through here, self-locate, and just get your two brackets mounted together. So let's get these brackets together now. I'll quickly show you how that works with the signals. The particular owner of this motorcycle didn't wish to have external signals, so we won't be putting them on, but I do want to demonstrate how these are mounted in here. Basically just get them through this hole. It fits pretty nicely in there. And you have the hardware that comes with your signals. Set of washers and a nut that slides over, fastens it in place. You can get a 14 millimeter wrench in there to tighten this down, position it properly, and you're good to go with the physical installation. Then you just have to wire it in. So with this tail light, we've provided you a number of pigtails Two blacks here are the grounds, and green and brown are the two different signal sides. 
So the yellow lead from your signals will go to either this one or this one, and then black goes to black, and it's self-explanatory. One thing that I need to note is that anytime you plug these guys in, they have these sheaths that are supposed to, you know, insulate them after you've made the connection, but they do have the ability to shift around. So I always recommend that you lock them down with electrical tape after you make the connection, slide this over, and then lock it down. All right, since this installation does not call for signals, I'm gonna remove this and just go on to locking down the rearmost hole. I'll grab one of my machine screws from our hardware kit, put it through here, and you'll notice that it just locates in the center. Then I'm gonna get one of these nylock screws, uh, nylock nuts, get that on the other side Repeat the procedure on the other side. To tighten down on this connection, we'll need a four millimeter Allen and a 10 millimeter open-ended wrench or box wrench. I always like to leave adjustability for a final, final setup point. I will not crank these down all the way just yet. Okay, now we're still adjustable, yep. Good to go. All right, so now we can bring this whole setup to the bike. And if you still have your rear slots aligned, you're good to go. I'm gonna use two of these other machine screws in here. Now this is not our final uh, fastening of these particular screw locations, so I haven't applied thread lock yet. I do need to caution you guys, these Supermotos, they vibrate a lot. Road vibration causes the removal of a lot of screws and then you end up losing them. So I always recommend that you use at least medium thread locking compound on this connection here on both sides. And then also I'll show you in a later step, there's two more screws down there. Up here, we have nylock nuts, they self lock, no need for that. The connections between these screws and the tail light, you definitely do not want to apply any kind of thread lock on there. Thread lock does damage ABS plastic. It ends up cracking over time, so please do not use that there. All right, let's move on. What I'm gonna do is just snug these guys up from the side here, the ones that I just threaded up. And this is just for locating purposes. This will enable me to get my rearmost screws and nuts tightened down in this position. Let's just make sure things are looking good. And in fact, they are. So now I am going to loosen half a turn and then go all the way in with these rearmost screws. And that's good. All right, let's now back these out all the way remove this from the bike. There's an easier way to install all of this stuff once the top tail is on. That's why I'm gonna remove it. On this particular bike, there was a request to install a license plate light on it. I know some guys don't like to run a license plate light. I'll show you how to get this on physically and then how to wire it up. So the first step is to put your wire insert it through the center cutout here. And then for the purpose of it not dangling around, I'm gonna lock it down with our license plate. Now you see there's a red strip of high bond, high bond double side tape on this. I typically don't use this. This is just for those guys that worry that their stuff's gonna fall off. They like that peace of mind. I have never actually seen this come off, but just wanted to appease our customers, so we applied that extra margin of safety there. I typically just clamp it down with the license plate, and it's good to go. We'll do a final adjustment on it later, after we get it on the bike with all the components. This is just to hold it in place. All right, now on the underside here, 
you have your wire coming out through the top of this triangle. We've provided a cutout here, a single cutout, and that's sort of a slot that's per perpend perpendicular to the center axis of the bike. This is how we get our wire in. It's just a matter of making sure that we don't get it twisted around here. Milk it out this way and make sure I get it in the slot properly. All right, I'm gonna leave about this much excess and then I'm gonna use one of these wire ties, get it in from top side down through one of the extra slots and then back up, turn this whole thing over and get my license plate light wire locked down to the tray. Get it zipped down and cut off the excess. All right, it's pretty good to go here. We'll grab the tape the foam tape that came with the kit. This is just a little damper on the lens. So if you experience a lot of vibration or go off a jump or something, your top tail fairing doesn't smack into the lens. I'm gonna apply it here, just aft of this ledge here onto the main portion of the lens. And now you'll have that extra damping there. Good to go. I do like to position it exactly against this crease it does provide a nice parallel to everything else installation now this thing's ready to go on we have to decide if we want to connect this license plate light to our wiring here or if we want to go all the way deep into the bike i think it is more sensible to get connected in here what i'm going to do is snip off some of this wire and use the connectors that are provided with our universal license plate light kit to get it installed here. I'll leave a little bit of excess. We do have a bunch of wires that will end up taking up a lot of the volume here, but we do need a little bit of excess here so that it doesn't become too cumbersome. After we snip this off, we need to snip it in half. And then we'll need to extract the red and black wires. Cut back about an inch and a half of insulation. Be careful not to snip the wires after you're, you expose them. Now, this is your positive, this is your negative. On the wiring harness here, the running light is blue, so red will go to blue, and black will go with black. And we'll use these toolless contacts to make our connection. Strip off just a little bit of wire, insulation rather, to expose about three millimeters, three to four millimeters of wire. It's just over an eighth of an inch. You guys are really easy to use separate them here by unscrewing them. Then you get the slotted portion around the wire that you're interested in connecting into. And then this cap has a piercing element and that will make a very, very small hole and make that connection for you there. And before we connect the actual wires, I'm gonna do that to the ground wire here as well. Now we'll need to remove the little cap off the top of the smaller diameter portion here that will make our connection with a license plate light wire. Twist the conductor wires on that and get it in through here, through that cap from the non-threaded portion to the threaded portion and then 
make the connection by screwing that on. When you screw that little cap on, it puts pressure on the wire against the conductor inside and give it a little tug, make sure that it's not gonna come loose on you. All right, and that's pretty much it. We have a nice, neat package here. All of this sub harness here stays actually back here in this location. So what we can do is actually get it all bunched up nicely and tie it off leaving a little bit of excess. We will need to hook up our sub harness here. This is the vehicle specific sub harness for this bike. Let's see how we can distribute this bulk in here properly. So this looks pretty good to me in this configuration. I'll grab the other zip tie that was provided. Snip off the excess, and this is pretty much good to go. We do need to do something about these guys being staying insulated and not touching ground. Mostly interested in the green and the brown one. The black wires are ground. Like I said, we are not using external signals here. So we will lock these guys down, make sure that they don't touch ground somewhere and cause a short in the signaling system. Just fold them over, give them a little bit of tape, wound around. Just like that. And then for neatness sake, I'm gonna throw another winding of tape around the entire set of signal pigtails here. That way we have nice, neat packaging and professional looking installation inside and out. All right, so now this will plug into the bike under the seat. This here will get contained in our tray. We're looking good. So we can start reassembling the bike a little bit. We need to get some of the components back onto the bike so that we could finalize this installation. So our top tail fairing will actually block off some of the wiring that needs to run through its routing here. So first, we're gonna lay that wiring down. Our sub harness is fully removable still. So we're gonna separate it from the rest of the setup. Get it laid in place here. The portion of the sub harness that has the wires exposed is really easy to pass through here. This retainer, and then we forward it here. Simple plug and play procedure. And then we just have to find a good spot for that plug down underneath. It's basically a game of making sure it fits in without pushing up on too much of this equipment here. And in fact, it does for me right now. I'm gonna replace these screws that we took off in an earlier step. This is where it gets tricky for me again because of my fingers. It's tough to get in there, but if you're patient, it's not a big deal. Just make sure that your aerator hose or overflow, whichever that is here for the fuel is not pinched anywhere. And that's good to go here. I'm going to get this retainer clip around our wiring loom and get it threaded in. Try to get it sort of tangent to the path of the wire. All right, now we can actually replace the top tail fairing. Fuel cap has to come up for that. Just make sure that your routing is still right here. Now, you have several sliding lock devices that interact with each other. These guys just go into these bobbin looking 
components and these guys have a window for them here so let's make sure all of that is engaged before we start pushing anything there are also slide locks that go underneath here at the same time that there are components fitting into the window so make sure you line all of that stuff before you start pushing forward it's pretty simple to see when you're close to here very tough to show on camera when you push it forward it has a little pop and if you don't have any extreme gaps in any of this stuff then you're good to go place this guy make sure we don't get debris in there and you can get under here plug this in get it rigged up and see what it looks like as you can see i'm holding that screw that i described to you in detail in previous steps i went into such detail because now we're at the point where we have to replace it and i wanted you guys to have all the details of how this needs to go in so let's get that in now you can actually see it penetrating through and catching the opposite fastener that can be tightened down all the way at this point and last step will be to connect everything up fasten it here and make sure everything jives so let's do that all right now we need to have proper bulk distribution here so we don't bunch up the wires and it's looking like i did a good job of tying all this stuff together neatly so the rear portion will have to come up and slide into that lock that i described previously when we were on the table you may need to flex this fairing down just a little bit and then make sure that you're in the center with the tail light and also make sure that the forward spots here are aligning with the screw holes i'm just gonna put one of these screws in by hand just to have the safety of a screw being in there and proceed to the other screw but First, going to apply a little bit of Loctite onto this fastener. Make sure that road vibration does not loosen my screws and give me the chance to have to go look for my license plate. Okay, I've preserved some adjustability just to make sure. I can align my whole assembly here if need be. Mine looks to be very much on axis with the whole bike. Nice dead center. So I'm just going to go ahead and tighten that down. Give the setup a really quick test. Make sure that all the electrical connections are working. Okay. As you may have noticed, we do have two additional screws that we didn't put into anything just yet. There are two screw holes here that we removed hardware from, and they're just open brass, and you're gonna get a bunch of dirt caked in there. So we've provided you with some screws that will close those holes out and make sure that your whole undertail area looks nice and neat and doesn't get too dirty. So we'll bottom those out in there. And that's pretty much it. Let's get the seat back on. I'm going to be done. All right, guys, we are done. The setup pretty much speaks for itself. I don't think I have to add a lot of ad lib over the look of this kit. You have a really nice, bright running light, really bright brake light. You have the option to use signals within the capsule or have separate signals that you can mount in here. The license plate is moved from down here, up here. The whole thing looks very sleek and sexy and sport-like, like this bike should. If you like what you see, check out tstindustries.com. You can read more about these products there and get them ordered online. See ya.